Roberto, why don't you take a little time here and tell the listeners just a little bit about um, your professional background. Uh, let's start there. What, what's your professional background? So my professional background is an attorney. I, I did my four years of undergrad uh, economics and then went off to law school three years in Austin. Great experience, great city, loved it. And uh, I worked at a law firm for close to eight years, more or less. I, I did real estate law and corporate law on the transactional side, not on the litigation side. So that, that was great experience. Um, it, it was really nice, but I, I think the law firm lifestyle was just not um, what I was looking for. It, 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 it didn't fulfill me. So I started to look for, for other things that I, I think we're going we're gonna to talk about. Interesting. And when you say transactional, that to me, it sounds like acquisition and disposition, acquisition and sales for um, on, the, on the commercial side. So commercial properties, is that, does that sound right? Yes. When I say transactional, I, I, I also mean to differentiate it from litigation. So I wouldn't, mm -hmm. if there were issues or, or problems, there were other attorneys at the firm that would actually file lawsuits or, or defend lawsuits. I was more on the correct, the disposition, acquiring, uh, changing of ownership, transfer of ownership, all of that, like the paperwork that, that goes behind things and, and negotiating many times uh, purchase contracts of commercial properties or, or of businesses themselves. Uh, so it was, yeah, it, it's kind of the behind the scenes of, of the changing of ownership in businesses or real estate. So what do you do now? So um, I, as I was going through that path, I was listening to podcasts uh, such as yours, just trying to learn more about real estate. And I, I honestly can't remember which podcast it was. This was back in 20, 2018. Uh, I, I hear Mark Podolsky, uh, the land geek, talking about the land investing model. And, and I heard kind of a five minute uh, pitch about how he goes out there, buys raw land, turns around, sells it on terms and gets mailbox money every month for X amount of years on those properties. And to be honest with you, I mean, I was, I was a real estate lawyer and I was helping people run their businesses, but I had never heard of this business model. And when I heard it the first time, it, it made a lot of sense. I mean, I didn't know that there were people buying and selling raw land out in the middle of nowhere many times uh, but but the transactional side of things the the way it worked really really made sense and I thought it was something that I could explore so for you and your professional experience like what were some of the things that end up you know turning out to be you know nothing to worry not nothing to raise a flag about just maybe you didn't know the particular part of this business uh, approach yeah so so that's that's a really good question and and I hadn't thought about it that way but but in reality I I feel like my legal background gave me a sense of security or, or not not security but confidence about like getting a contract with the seller getting a deed from the seller I'd prepare hundreds of deeds at that point mm -hmm. uh, recording the deed with the county uh, selling the property, drafting the purchase con, all of that I felt comfortable with and I, it, it didn't intimidate me. What was much more intimidating for me was the marketing side of things, the mm. sales side of things, talking to sellers, talking to buyers. Uh, how, do I, how do I approach that? The business management of things, uh, the organization of, of, of running a business and, and hiring virtual assistants and having systems in place, all that was was foreign to me. And, and that having been in this uh, this legal world, I, I felt pretty comfortable with all of the legal aspects of it. Uh, once I researched it, I mean, there there were things that I did question, like, like, can you do owner finance and all that? But I could research all of those things and I could get comfortable with them. It was really the the running a business which i had never done uh that kind of intimidated me and 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 really made me think about 
what I needed to do to make it work, which was eventually several years of, of coaching and training that, that, that I went through. So tell us a little bit about what that first deal looked like. Yeah, so the first deal was uh, was pretty amazing. I, I feel like it, it was a sign uh, that I needed to pursue this business because I, I really I don't think I've had as good as a, as good a deal uh, since then. But basically, the, the the business model is I, I send out letters to landowners, seeing if they're willing to offload their land to me uh, for cents on the dollar. And so I, at the beginning, when I started this business, I was printing these letters, hand like wet signs, all of these letters, putting them in the mail, putting them in envelopes, putting the stamp and putting them in the mail. And so, uh, in that first batch of maybe 500, 600 letters, I got a letter back no name, excuse me, no, no email address, no phone number. It was just a guy saying, signing the offer letter saying, I'm willing to sell you my property for $500. And I was like, wow, that's what I was like, what? He's, and and, and he, it ended up being two lots that he had and he wanted 500 for each. But oh, wow. I didn't have a phone number. I didn't have an email. So this was all snail mail. Snail mail. Yeah. So <laughs> at that point I was like, okay. I, I didn't do a lot of due diligence on the property, so I was I was just excited that I had somebody who had responded. And so what I did is I drafted up a letter saying, thank you for your response. Attached is a deed. Please sign it in front of a notary. Once we get the deed back, I'll send you your check for $1,000. Summed up. Mm -hmm. I put it in the mail. I'm like, this guy's never, I mean, it, best case scenario he calls me and tells me like hey what's going on a week two weeks later I get a letter back it's the deed signed notarized saying here's a deed please send money please send check to the same address I was like oh my god so I go I, I go and record the deed gets recorded I send the guy the money I'm like great I have two properties now what do I do with them I then start doing a little bit more of due diligence and I come to find out that there were $3,000 in back taxes on each oh, of man. these properties. I'm like, no, I just got myself into this $6,000 debt that, that uh -huh. made no sense. So I started making some phone calls to land invest, no, not land investors, but just people in my circle that I knew that might be interested in this property. and. I reach this guy and he I tell him the, the property ID. I give him the Google Maps location. I tell him where it is. And he offers me $10,000 for each one. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was wow. like, and then, and I told him there's back taxes. He's like, that's okay. I'll take care of the back taxes. Let's just get it done. We go through a title company. We close. I get a $20,000 check. I'm like, what did just just happened like I, I I spent a thousand dollars it turned into this like I said it's not like every deal this happens uh, but it was just proof of concept it, it I realized that even though I had made a mistake on the property taxes it ended up working out and so it for me and and it gave me the funds necessary because I didn't have a lot of funds but like that deal gave me the funds necessary to really kickstart the business, start mailing more, being able to get more properties and in inventory, pay for some of the coaching. So it, it was just like a, a perfect deal to get started with, proving that the model works. And like that was just the beginning. And from there on, I, I just kept going. First one is, uh, how did you pick an area? Like what area did you pick or what's, Tell us a little bit about that selection for you. Yeah, so so the the best way when you're getting started to pick an area is there's a handful of websites that you could go and see where other land investors are, are buying and selling raw land. Well, really where they're selling land uh, retail. So there's 
Landmoto, Landwatch, LandCentury, Lands.com, uh, Farms of America, or Lands and Farms. There's 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 a lot there. Land flip, and you kind of see where there's movement, and and based on on the movement, then you go into that county and you do your your county research, which is figuring out how friendly their their website is. Can you do recordings electronically? Can you uh is their gis map the the map to, to like the, the equivalent of like a google earth map but for the specific county is it is it user friendly you kind of start trying to figure out all of those things um and then based on on the movement that there is from other land investors you send out offer letters and 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 you try to find deals that way saying okay if there's land investors selling land in that area for ten thousand dollars, let's try to pick it up for anywhere from two thousand to maybe four thousand max. 